Good evening and welcome back to Tinkering with Etkelar. In the previous episode I disassembled a mechanical calculator and ended up with a few loose ends. Be sure to check out part 1 first. The main counter drum is made up of 10 dynamic gears. You can use the little lever to make them from 0 to 9 teeth each. Pretty slick mechanism. Now, clean up time! Note that there is a little lever that folds down when the wheel is in the zero position and sticks up when it's anywhere else. Also note that there are two sections of teeth on the setting ring. These will become important later. Each ring has a pair of spring-loaded levers too. These are for the carry mechanism and make each wheel unique in its position on the drum, since they are staggered so that the carry can propagate. Side note, I had to remove the grease from these parts later, it was just slightly too sticky. The drums are the first parts that come together again. Already feels like an accomplishment. The parts took quite some IPA to remove the sticky residual oil but at least the digit wheels cleaned up nicely. 
Originally, one number on each wheel was darkened, probably being on display in a smoker household or dusty environment. Either way, all the wheels are now shiny with white numbers again. Up next, the crank. The plastic handle has worn down the shaft on the inside, so it's quite a bit loose. I decided to remake the metal part of the crank. Lathe time! The replacement is a tube with a narrow end that holds back the spring inside. Simple enough. I drilled out the old shaft, low RPM, because the crank isn't really well balanced. I was going for a good press fit into the crank. Works out fine. And then, drilling a new hole for the retention pin. The case is worn down in parts, so I decided to give it a new coat of paint. The handle part contains the plus and minus switch for the counter drum. I need to make sure that the gears are in order before I hammer in the new pin for the crank. Fixing the crank to the case again, I had to sand and file away a smidge so that it would no longer bind up. Note that the binding up is even worse now, since I had painted the case.
the bottom mechanics are next. As long as the top is empty, it's easier to assemble them. At least almost, since the linkage hides access to one of the screws. There are quite a few springs attached. The lever on the side is supposed to move the carriage to the left or right by one position. I use my usual metal grease for all the slow moving parts and a dab of oil for the faster turning wheels and axles because it has less drag. Another reason why everything in here is so complicated is also another feature from the product fact sheet. Complete interlock. That means that you can only use levers and the crank if the current state of the clockwork agrees. Unless you use brute force, the device makes it impossible for you to end up in a jammed state. And all these interlocking levers and springs are adding to the complexity.
Next, the missing input reset lever spring. I tried several different combinations, but the only one that worked for me was a double wound spring on the internal arm. No idea if that's true to the original, but it does work. I fixed the broken bearing for the main drum with putty epoxy. It worked out ok after filing it smooth again, but I would rather use regular epoxy. It would get the parts closer together. The next step is a bit more critical. The main drum needs to align with all the interlocks and there is only about one tenth of a millimeter tolerance on those, if at all. That took some tweaking in the linkage. And against all odds, the video is even too long for two parts. Stay tuned for part three. But the nuts that hold the discs on the shaft is utterly stuck, are utterly stuck. Both of them. <laughs> 